Happy Sunday. How are you guys? Hi, everybody. Grandma, you're always the first one. Grandma, you're She's the best. Good. How are you guys? And Aunt Julie. Yeah, we have lots of friends. She's got earbuds in. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, Alyssa, all the way from Hawaii. I feel like you get some award for most, most distance that you're watching this from. Hi. Oh my gosh, I bet you wish you were back in Hawaii. I do. Well, yeah. we're actually going to... The Barnsons are going to go. They're going to Maui. Oh yeah. So we're cooking something today that's actually... Reminds me of Hawaii because it's um, the palmini noodles, which are from the palm trees, um, from inside the palm trees. So that's kind of fun. Amelia is in the kitchen real quick. We're going to get her ready. Hey, everyone. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing a couple of question and answers that people um, submitted. And then we are going to do our palmini noodles. Since it's National Linguini Day, we thought we'd try them for the first time. Uh, since they're like a linguine type noodle. And then we are going to might have my dad teach us all, because I don't really know how to do it either, to pan sear some fish and scallops. And then I'm going to try fish. So also I have to give an update on my uh, keto. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody, those of you that are new, um, I've been eating keto for, what, about a year and a half, Gina? Supporting you? Yeah, yeah. But I've never really track my calories religiously and uh, I eat a lot and so I, I lost a little bit of weight when I first started but then I plateaued which was fine and as I always say to people like other years and uh, I didn't gain any weight which was good but I decided and I announced that I wanted to lose 50 pounds last week uh, so I've been measuring with my fitness pal and I have 1682 calories I think is what we calculated and uh, in the first uh, 10 days I've been doing it, I lost, no, excuse me, the first 12 days. 12 days, yeah. 12 days total, I've lost 10 pounds. Yeah, so that's super great. He's just been tracking and measuring and it so, works. So if you have a father who has been carrying around a couple extra pounds, you might suggest to them, that's an easy way to do it. And uh, I'd see a thumbs up from Julie Barnison. Yeah. So, well, thanks. Uh, Every, lots of fans, Dad. That's yeah. really nice. So, you know, lots of progress. This uh, this shirt that Julie Barnes had made, it's fitting a little looser now yeah. than it was when I first got it, which is nice. Great. Okay, so the first question we had, which I think might help a lot of people, was about waffle care or maintenance of these little dash waffle makers that everyone's using. Um, I actually, my mom just bought her first one a couple days ago, and she had the truffles. And so I did some research, and try to figure out the best way to care for them and clean them because I know that a lot of people um, are having that issue. First off, I'm, I put them on a, like, on a plate so that all the, this is a brand new, never been used, so that's why it looks perfect, but um, it, you know, it gets cheese and egg kind of oozes out, so it's good to keep it on a plate. The other thing that I learned from doing, you know, reading the manual, sometimes there's good tips. They suggested, um, if you get like a lot of grease or buildup to use uh, to make, when it's cool, put a little bit of cooking oil on it and let that sit for like five to 10 minutes. And that also helps with the non-stick. So if you notice that your waffle maker ever starts to like not stick any, like it's, it's losing its non-stick, you can just kind of revive, revive it with some cooking oil. So that's helpful to do. Um, they do say like do not use any cleaners on it. Like it will ruin the um, the finish of it. So to just use soapy water. Um, and I've been using like my bottle brush that I use like to clean out Amelia's bottle or like water bottles and stuff. And just um, kind of use that to get in between the grooves. That really helps get down in there. And um, yeah, so just scrub it with a sponge. You can have like a dedicated waffle sponge because like. I don't want my sponge that I use on my countertops to be in my waffles. So yeah, that's, those are a couple tips that um, people asked about the waffle maker. Um, and then we're going to talk about, a couple people asked about olive oil and cooking with olive oil. And we're going to cover that when we do the sautéing. Um, favorite dish to prepare. Some people wanted to know what our favorite things to prepare were. Dad, what's your favorite? Uh, I like to do the scallops because uh, they're such a popular dish. For people my wife loves them and uh, they're impressive when they're done right and uh, so I, it's kind of my go-to when we have somebody coming over that we haven't fed for a while 
And mine is probably just anything simple or easy lately. We've been loving the Joe Special because it's super, super simple and protein and nutrient dense. Just with any ground meat, spinach and eggs and top it with ketchup and Parmesan cheese and that's it. And we, we always eat it like probably once a week. I ate it a ton when I was trying to lose weight because it is so filling because it's like so much protein. But you get, um, you know, you can add onions in, you can add hot sauce in. There's lots of different ways to make it fun. So now we are going to show you the palmini noodles. We have never used them before, never opened them out of the can. So we're a little bit nervous, but we thought since it's National Linguini Day, we'll give it a try. So I'm going to, we'll turn it around. And I did some research on the palmini noodles for y'all. So um, we picked these up yesterday at um, Publix. They were $3.50. Um, they also have them at Walmart, on Amazon, and on Nutrition. You might see them in like a pouch. And I was kind of wondering like, why is mine in a can and why are some in a pouch? So I researched it and they said that pouches are easier for shipping. The cans get dented a lot in shipping and a pouch that just is, um, it means it's, it's easier to, um, to transport. But also the pouches have a year and a half shelf life. These, I mean, I can't, I was trying to find the expiration date on them. I, didn't find it, but um, I'm sure it's longer than a year and a half. But uh, things in a can, though, Gina, generally have a pretty long shelf life. Yeah. Because they cook them in the can with what's called a retort process. Well, that is one of the things I wanted to say. Actually, okay. is that they're already cooked. So for a busy mom or busy, and I mean, I feel like we're all busy these days. And so the pasta is already cooked in here. Um, I should say, like, this is definitely not an ad. Like, they don't know who I am. I just bought these myself, so I don't want you to think that I'm like trying to sell you something. I just am excited to um, try these and to find it's a gluten-free pasta option that's also um, low-carb keto. Um, and we've been using the shirataki noodles. Um, I actually had that today because I wanted to kind of compare the tastes. Um, and I really like them, but I know a lot of people do not. So I've been trying to find an option when people ask because pasta is one of the things I miss most in the last year and a half. You know, we're Italian, we're a big pasta family. so. I'm just trying to find some alternatives that are easy to find. This, you know, is 20 calories per serving and it's two net carbs per serving or four total carbs per serving. So since it's already cooked, what they just said on um, directions is to uh, open it up like this. Ooh, show you what it looks like. So as I said earlier, the hearts of palm and parts of a palm tree. So it's kind of in that water there. Um, Okay, so it smells like a lot like an artichoke heart or artichokes. Um, I know that a lot of the other noodles have like a fishy smell. So that's because I don't do fish really. Uh, I prefer this already. So um, you just, it says to uh, drain it and rinse it with plenty of water. So I'm going to just pour it in here. It does really surprisingly look like a noodle. Um, they said that you could, you know, have, serve this for, you know, four to five people, but I don't know. So we got two cans. So something different we're gonna to do today, it also says on the container that you can, it's optional, if you want to neutralize the flavor and the smell, of, kind of like the smells like artichokes, you can rinse it or let it soak in your favorite uh, type of like milk for 15 to 30 minutes and then rinse it again. So I just have some unsweetened almond milk that I'm gonna put in here and we're gonna let the noodles, one can, not both, just one can sit in the um, almond milk. Oh, can it really? So it definitely has like a firm texture. It kind of looks like those noodles that we got in Houston. Yeah, the healthy noodles. Some yeah. people have those at their Costco, um, which they're like a soy-based um, coated yak noodles too, but um, we do not have that available at our Costco here. So as an aside, sometimes when um, I'm snacking and I'm really desperate to get something of substance, I buy hearts upon at Costco in a glass jar yeah, and, and pull them out and then put like a little mustard on them and uh, it's, it's pretty good. So we'll let that one soak. Everything that I've read online said that if you like like an al dente pasta, you can almost eat them like straight out of the can, just add your favorite sauce. But if you like more of like a soft noodle and you don't want that crunch or whatever your um, meal is, then you can cook them, like boil them for a couple of minutes. Um, I was envisioning these as like really great in like a casserole, um, it's just like a noodle replacement. Um, so we're gonna let those soak and I'll set a timer for 20 minutes. We might as well do a 
the other can as well. And um, usual on Shark Tank, which is one of our favorite TV shows. So I was so excited. Um, we like to buy a lot of Shark Tank stuff just because we like that show. Um, yeah. Great. And I know some people, like uh, Sam Danielle had these last night. Like a lot of people are really into them. I've just never tried them before and never found them. But they're in the gluten-free section at Walmart. And then where did we find them at Publix? Do you remember? We found them in the... Um... In the pasta section on the top shelf. Oh, okay. Yeah, we bought the last two cans they had. We would have bought more, but that was all they had at Publix. Uh, I think I said you can get them on Amazon or Nutrition. They're a little bit more expensive on Amazon, and you have to buy a whole lot. So they do have on their website a store finder where you can and uh, let me just make sure I get those really well. But yeah, I'm gonna try next time at Costco get the hearts up, the whole hearts up song and add them. Because I've got some really great recipes that I want to try with them as well. Okay, so there's that. I think I said um, everything I wanted to say about that. Have, oh, kind of a fun fact. They're 90% water, which is really interesting. Um, and so those are all the questions we had, all the things I wanted to cover with that. Which means you probably can't warm them too much it's because they'll lose a lot of their yeah. moisture. Yeah, okay, so our timer is going for the... Almond milk, so we'll see how that goes. And that, and so now it's time for <coughs> my dad to take over, and he's going to teach us all how to sear some fish. Okay, so I'm not doing this from notes. I'm just going to talk to you like uh, as if I had a friend over. So I always tell people that if you can learn techniques, whether it's blanching or or roasting, or we've talked a lot about sous vide that you can apply it to a lot of different uh, circumstances. And so today I'm going to show you that I'm not going to do a lot of measuring. We're not going to be using a recipe. We're just using a technique and we're going to, we're going to be simple. So here's a, here's some of the things you need to, to know. First of all, we use Kirkland olive oil and this is not extra virgin. You can use extra virgin. However, that when you heat olive oil, any of the benefits you get from extra virgin, which is more expensive, goes away. So the, the chefs always just use regular pure olive oil, which is what we're going to use today. And we're going to use a couple tablespoons in the pan. Because we're not really cooking it in the oil. The, the pan's doing the work. And we just want to add a little bit of uh, lubrication to the, to the fish. And we have, um, in addition to that, now I promised that we were going to teach you keto and non-keto. So if you're not eating keto, the only substitution of everything we're doing here is this is actually almond flour. If you're doing non-keto, uh, I would suggest you use Wondra flour, which comes in a little cylinder. And it's, it's, the good thing about Wondra is it doesn't cake, and it's light and fluffy, and it comes in a little can you can use, and it's really the, the best for that. But since we're going to say keto, we're using almond flour. Then we're going to use a little bit of salt and pepper now. Some chefs who are a little more hoity-toity will use white pepper. And the real only difference between white and black pepper is the color. Um, and if they're serving a fish that's delicate, some people think that the black pepper takes away from the, the look of it. I don't think it really matters that much. Okay. And then we have some, uh, some pink Himalayan sea salt. Again, uh, this is pink. Some might want to use white. It doesn't really then also, we're going to use as a basting at the end, and it's going to go fast, so I don't have a lot of time to talk. I pre-made um, a butter uh, shallot mix, and uh, I, I basically took one shallot. This is a shallot. We'll talk about that in a second. And then mixed it and chop, chopped it finely with uh, unsalted butter and... Um, mixed it together and let it sit overnight. Now, a shallot, some of you may be familiar with it, but those of you that aren't, they sit in the produce department near the garlic and near the onions, and some people shy away from them because they're not really sure how to use them. Uh, I would say most households don't use them, and most uh, chefs do. And the reason the chefs like them is when they're raw, they're, uh, they're pungent like an onion, um, and, and they're very flavorful, but when they're cooked, and, and, and we're going to be cooking these and warming them up, they get a, a sweet taste of them. 
and it's a real delicious, mild, delicate flavor. Sometimes garlic can be overwhelming to people, and onion can be also uh, too too strong and hard to handle. So uh, um, a shallot is really a delicious way to make your meal a little more fancy. Okay. Then I'm going to have this spoon in hand because I'm going to use it to baste the fish. So here's the process. We're going to we're going to season the fish, and we're going to get the oil ready in the pan. And the uh, if you're Gina will post these later, but here are the details on cooking fish. First of all, it's easier if you get a selection that's the same size. One of the hardest things to cook is a piece of salmon that is cut at a butcher shop where they have the fat side of the salmon and it gets all the way down to the skinny side because no matter how good you are, you're going to overcook that skinny side and undercook the fat side. So ideally, you want to get a piece of fish, and this is a way that most restaurants want to cut, where it's close. In fact, a, a really, really good restaurant will actually trim this a little bit more to get just this one piece. And, and that's why you see those small sizes mm -hmm. like that. Now, we also, um, we, we have one rogue flying <laughs> around we just saw. Um, I'm talking a bit about fresh versus frozen seafood. Now, the people, uh, I would say, who are emotionally involved in fish and really are into it want fresh fish. The, um, the enemy of fish is bacteria. When you go into a, a place where they haven't handled it properly or you, it's in your refrigerator for a while and you smell it, it's bacteria that's doing that. So you want to um, avoid that. When a fish is caught, you don't really know how it's handled. Generally, when it's fresh, it's thrown into the refrigerated hole of the boat, and it could be out there for a day or two. Then it's brought in, and they transfer them to a large plastic tubs, and they get moved around, and they go onto different trucks. And when they go on a different truck, they go out on a loading dock, which might be 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, back into a truck. And there's always this exposure to heat and handling. And uh, fresh fish can be uh, have some bacteria with it. And it may, you contrast that with frozen fish. Now, a frozen fish that you get at Costco, and Gina, I'm going to show the package here. This is what we're having tonight, which is Corvina. And uh, so the folks at Costco buys their fish from, they go out and fish. They catch the fish, and while they're out there fishing, they have a processing crew on board who are flying the fish, cleaning them, and preparing them, and they freeze them. And they get them down to these individually sized pouches which makes it really easy to, to go in and pick and they to frost really quickly. Uh, you can put this in the refrigerator and they'll over the frost in a couple hours. And no bacteria, clean fish, and if you handle it properly, you're going to have as delicious as you do fresh at a fraction of your cost. Now I'll put this back in the Oh, look what we found. Oh, they tried that last night, yeah. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do the fish now. Hi, Amelia. First thing we'll do is we will put the we'll put this. To, oh, one thing I did forgot to say. You can do this with salmon. You can do. We're gonna do it with scallops tonight too. After this, and you can do like thin pork chops this way, or um, a thin piece of meat. It, it's really no different. And once you, I mean, I would say you can't do it with a lobster, but any fish, the process is the same. And, and once you learn it, your, your friends will be amazed. What about the heat point and stuff for olive oil? Because okay, we did so, have that question. All right. So the reason I use olive oil, it's the way I was taught. And uh, you know when it's ready to cook it, when it starts, to, it's a smoke point. Because you don't want it to be too uh, cool, because when you put the fish in, it'll soak up all the oil. So you want it to be fairly hot. And that's why I recommend you use uh, olive oil. But we did look it up just to double check, and it is safe. Like the heat point, I know some people were wondering like if it was safe to saute in olive oil, or if you should use something like a coconut oil or avocado oil, which has higher uh, heat points. Like I, when I do my fried chicken, I do it in coconut oil, not, you know, olive oil. Now for uh, you parents in the crowd, just as a reminder, when you're ever using 
or on the uh, stove. I try not to do that because your little munchkins will come along and can grab it. So they knock it off. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let the pan get hot, and if you want to come over, you, again, I'm not gonna get too technical with the measurements, but we just want a, a tablespoon to, not too much, just enough to coat the pan and uh, help, help with the browning of the fish. Okay, so let's go back to the fish now. We have a fat piece and a thinner piece, so we're going to do uh, cook both of them. So I'm going to put just about that much flour on each one, okay? Now, we've never done on the flour, so we're going to see how this works out. So let me see using Wonder when I'm not eating keto. Now, I can tell you, too, I have done this without any flour, and it, and it works fine. Now, uh, again, we're not doing too much measurements, but, you know, a little bit of salt. And for those of you that are on keto, you know, you need some electrolytes and get some from salt. That's fine. And then we're going to put some pepper on. Okay. We're good. And we're good. Now, um... As I said, we're going to do both sides. Now, this actually, the good folks at Costco might know this this piece of fish is kind of falling apart, but we're going to show you you can still do it. Okay. Okay, now we have both sides done. We've got to wait and see. Uh, we're going to watch. Again. You can't see this at home, but what I will do when I'm cooking this, and, and that's about the flaming one, it's like a medium high flame. I'm going to watch until I start to see a little bit of smoke come off, and I'm not there yet. So what else can we talk about? Well, oh. people ask questions about okay. the noodles, too, but we can, I'll post a bunch of stuff about the noodles. So don't worry, I'll post all the um, nutrition facts and everything later. So fish are very delicate. I use uh, this often. It's just a nice thin uh, spatula. But if I have a piece of fish that I think is falling apart potentially, I have these little tongs. But if you've already figured out from Gina, we like cooking gifts. Yeah. So Got it from my it. dad. <laughs> so, oh, I did want to talk about the temperature. So the ideal temperature for the fish is 130 degrees done. Uh, that's a mistake that people make is they, they overcook fish because they don't know how when to take it off. And we'll, we're going to use, um, I know Gina always corrects me, I, I say Taylor Instant Read, and we have a drawer full of Instant Read thermometers that we like to use. And I always want to have a couple extra just in case the battery goes down. I've got this one too. So we are ready to go, but when we, when we put the fish in, the first step is going to be to brown it to what we call paper bag brown, okay? It's about the size of what you remember a paper bag being. That's ideally kind of the brown you want it to get. Then when we flip it over, that's when we're going to check the temp. And when it gets to be about 120, so 10 degrees short of being done, that's where we'll put the butter in. Okay, so hopefully this hasn't been too difficult yet. Mm -hmm. And I see a little bit of smoke coming off, so we're ready to go, okay? Now, I anticipate that the thin one will cook faster than the thick one, but... Okay, here we go. The sound is uh, good feedback. That we're at the right temp. Okay, so I'm just going to shake around a little bit. Oops. Okay. Now, Gina is so excited about eating some fish. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Do you need another plate for, uh, to put the fish on? My only pet that I had growing up was fish, tropical fish and goldfish. And so I just. Rainbow princess. Yeah, so I have a little bit of a hard time getting over the fact that it's a fish, but okay. I, I'm ready to get over it. We talked about this last week. Uh, I set the oven to 170 because that's the lowest it would go. And I put in four plates. And once I got hot all the way through, 
I shut it off. And they're still just uncomfortable with that so not that hot yet. But if you put a delicate piece of fish on a cold plate, it's cold just like that. So uh, in a good restaurant, we're going to do it. Now we're going we're gonna to bend the rules a little bit because we're trying to cook for you. And we won't be eating these right away. Let me sneak a peek here and see how they work. Now we have a little bit to go. Now, it looks to me like the almond flour isn't browning up quite as much as um, the regular flour would, which may be uh, a key to compromise the ethanol. Okay. I wonder if like a blend of like coconut flour, like maybe some sugar. I don't know. I guess you don't want sugar substitute. Well, on sugar there. substitute doesn't really. Yeah. It doesn't caramelize, so it doesn't help you that much because it's not the sweetness. Yeah. It's the sugar. Yeah. Reaction. All right. I think, I think we're in pretty good shape of open. So we've got these this one broken half and the small filling. Okay. Now we're going to turn over the big one. Now let's presentable. And we'll wait a couple more minutes. Okay, so the other thing I was going to talk to you about is presentation. <clears throat> now, when I serve these to uh, a guest, generally, I will, uh, when they're not on keto, I use uh, like rice pilaf or another type of uh, uh, couscous. Couscous? Couscous? Um, yeah, couscous. <laughs> I'm confusing with couscous. <laughs> um, and, and some kind of grain is, is a nice... Thing because you, you put it on, it looks really nice on the plate and absorbs something different. If we're not doing that, we have a different. Uh, so I made something. I just want to. I made these with. Um, I bought the broccoli pearls mm -hmm. at uh, a manager special. Yeah. Store, <laughs> and I, um, I added one can of Raquel. which, again, was a Costco purchase. We bought like a 12 pack of them. And then I just put a little bit of cheese on top, just to give it a little bit of cheese flavor. And uh, it's really a delicious, fairly low-carb uh, base for a side dish. And you put a little bit of that salsa I made that was oh, yeah, so the, hot. The hot sauce oh, my gosh. So spicy. Okay. So let's check the temp here and see where we're going on these fish. That's such a good idea. Idea is um, if we dip it in an egg wash and then almond flour, then it would brown maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Thanks for so the tip. Sixty-five. It's hard to when you try to change your old family favorites to keto. Sometimes you need to take a couple tries. Okay, but so worth it. Go. Let me turn it up just a just a smidgen. That's a cooking term. A smidgen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to um, finish the pasta in these two. We're just, we're not cooking the pasta, the, I guess I should say the palmini. Um, and we're going to use just this, some of this leftover butter shallot mixture to kind of just have a nice little, um, so that's another thing we're going to use to plate. Add a little extra for that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of looks good, even though I'm not a big fish person. Like it smells good. So last night we were cooking, and I was browning some New York strip steaks, and I set off a fire alarm. Yeah, and I have. Company was calling this. Yeah, I have. We took a video of it um, of him of us doing the steaks, which I'll post to YouTube because it was a great technique that we tried that worked out really well. Do you think you'll do that next time with the steaks, Dad? Or? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. We just covered the steaks and mayonnaise before we finished them, and they, it was delicious. I was watching some other videos online today at, the, at on Wegman's YouTube channel, and they were showing how to make uh, Cuban corn. And they showed that you roasted the whole corn in the oven, and then they put mayonnaise on top of it before they put it back in the roaster for you. It was, it looked delicious. I didn't have it, of course. We can't have well, they have baby corn that um, I am 
I want to try to make some different types of corn dishes with. Okay, so my YouTube channel, it's it's really new, so it's kind of hard to find because it's, I don't have that many videos. Um, wait, that's our timer for the noodle. Um, it's Girl Eat Keto. Um, I'll post a link to it on my stories so you can find it. Um, but And then you can subscribe if you want. Because I have like four videos that I just have to post, so I'll just do like one or two a, a day um, of just little techniques that we do together or recipes or things like that. Okay, so you have to, at this point, you've got to keep watching it because it's going to go fast. I flipped it over because this on the flour is actually a little different, and uh, it took a while to brown up. So we're at 80, but it's going to go from 80 to 120 quickly, which is part of the challenge of cooking uh, proteins on a direct heat, is you can go from ideal to overcook mm -hmm. fast. So this is a nonstick pan. You have to use nonstick. You, uh, I, or would, just I would suggest oil, using a nonstick pan, yeah. Okay. Today is also National Wife Appreciation Day, so I got to take a nice nap today while Brian took care of Amelia. You know how I, I showed my appreciation to your mom? You had her mulch. I let her help the me. The front yard. Yeah. Well, you sting her fish. She loves, it says scalps are her favorite meal, so that's me. Nice. That's her love language. Yeah. Is working in the yard. <laughs> These are taking a while to heat up. Well, do you want me to... Um, I guess we don't want to do the, new, the pasta yet because we want to do it right before we eat. So then we'll do just those two pieces of fish and then you do the scallops. Next, the scallops. Next, the scallops, sure. Okay, great. If anybody has any questions, just feel free to write them at any time. I'll go back and um, I'll show you guys the sugar and the nutritional facts because a lot of some people were asking about the sugars and fiber. Um, so it's for one serving, it, uh, these are the palmini noodles. It's four carbs, two fiber, zero sugar. And it's 100%. There's nothing else added to this except hearts of palm. So they just um, make the hearts of palm look like the noodles into the shape. And you ready? Okay. Okay. So... I'm going to lower it here slightly at this point, and we're going to put in the, the, the good stuff. Is that Kerrygold butter? It looks really it dark. Is. Yeah, I would say it looks... If I want Kerrygold butter, I go to my parents' house, because they buy these kinds of butter. Okay, so all you do is let it, let it uh, cook a little bit, and just continue to baste it. The universal truth is anything with butter or mayonnaise always tastes better. So you can't go wrong with that. So by putting the butter over it, is it just helping it like, cook a little bit too? And it? It's just seasoning it. Yeah. And it's also cooking the shallots. Oh, yeah. And we're not big cauliflower fans. Like, my mom will not eat cauliflower. Uh, I mean, I like it in, like, a crust on a pizza. Like, not if I make it myself, but otherwise. Um, so these broccoli pearls are really great because they're high fiber, low carb. Sorry, guys. And uh, so they kind of make a good rice substitute. Oh, that looks nice. Okay. Yes, that one yeah, it's butter and it's um, shallot. Which I just did one shallot. It's a shallot. So. And so, is there um, any uh, garlic in there, Dad? No. No garlic. So just butter and shallot. That yeah. he missed that. And 
It's what's that? Corvinia is a fish. Corvina. Corvina. Uh, I'm clearly not a fish. I'm shooting for a more delicate flavor in garlic than the other one. Okay. Well, look. Yeah. So we just got this frozen at Costco, and we'll just take it out. I'll put details also in the notes of the video too. You can always reference those. Once I post them to YouTube, it's easier that way. So this is the shallot, um, and it's in the produce section. I'm sure they're expensive, yeah. like pennies, probably. Of course, I'm so glad you could join us. It's 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 uh, it's not an onion. It's, Right? It's in the same family as an onion, but it's um, it's not like a purple onion. I know it look, kind of looks like one, but it's it's different than a purple onion. So there's what they look like. Wow, that looks good, actually. Okay, well if it looks good. Oh no, <laughs> is it time for me to eat it? Oh, you want to eat it? Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. I don't. I haven't committed to eating this for dinner yet. Just there's steak in the fridge from last night, so it's a big piece. Hmm. That's really good. That's good. It doesn't taste fishy. No, it's a mild fish. Hmm. I wouldn't know if that was fish. Unless you, you saw it. I saw it. That's good. I would definitely. I mean, I don't know if I want to eat the whole thing. It's, just, it's a text. It's a taste texture thing. <laughs> so um, now we're gonna do scallops then. Yep. So that's what it looks like. There's the broccoli rice we have made with the rotel. Super easy. All you do is just you know, add rotel or. Um, to just broccoli rice. Oh, oh my goodness. That's a hotel, obviously. And there's that. Um, I'll show you this again. So one thing I thought was interesting with this is that it's, um, it's sustainably farmed. So they don't actually cut down the palm tree that they use to make these. Um, it, it just like will grow back. So it's, you know, I mean, it feels like it's like a miracle food. Um, Okay, Dad, do you take it out before they reach their desired doneness since they continue to cook? Uh, That's a good question. I take them out at um, 1.30 um, because once they're, they're so thin, once you take them off, they're not, they, see, they don't really have the mass like a piece of meat does. So they, they, don't, they stop cooking pretty quickly. Thanks. This is my parents' kitchen. I like it too. They have some fun features. Like for some reason in my neighborhood, you cannot get gas. We have to have electric. So, but this neighborhood can have gas. So it's great to cook with a gas stove instead of electric. Okay. I'd be curious from the crowd, who prefers scallops over a fish? Are there people out there that are excited about scallops? I guess is my question. I know. My mom and my husband are very excited about scallops. Some people are allergic to scallops. Um, we have some allergies in our family. For we, we bought these at Costco, and I have to say, these are fresh. And in all honesty, I'm kind of disappointed in them. Um, there, there's some pieces that are probably should have been left in the back room, um, but. You know, we have the worst run Costco in the United States, and in, in uh, Franklin, Tennessee, and Cool Springs Mall. If you're interested, and I've been to Costco's everywhere from Hawaii to Iceland. Yeah, those and, are uh, really falling apart. Some of this. It's just it's, a, it's it sh they shouldn't be in there. But we're going to come and learn. I'll fill out my little comment card. To yeah, you can always if you. And they will they'll ignore like the new. <laughs> Um, if you go to a Costco and you want something that they don't have, you can fill out a customer request for them. And we do that a lot. Um, they don't necessarily bring it in, but um, 
Wow, Julie used to scuba dive to get scallops. Um, Julie used to scuba dive to get scallops. Julie. Barnison. Really? Yes. And, oh, scallops wrapped in bacon. That sounds good. Yeah, scallops turning out rubbery. I think that is pretty standard. Um, I've, I've been nervous to eat them. Um, we okay, have... If you watch the tip, though, they won't be rubbery. Well, you're going to show us how to make them not rubbery, so that's good. Um, we're not going to have Amelia try them yet because we do have a couple people in our family who are allergic, so I'm just trying to be, trying to be safe for her. Okay, as promised, the process is pretty much the same. So we're going to get some olive oil in here. We'll move the fish to the side. <clears throat> Mr. Hands may want to come across him. <laughs> Brian, try and tell us what do you think. We call Brian Mr. Hands because a lot of times in my videos, he's just um, okay. using his hands so, to do stuff. We are going to use flour again. And I wish we could use the eggs. Brian, do you want to be on camera? <laughs> oh, sous vide. Dad, have you done scallops in the sous vide? No, I haven't. Uh, I'm curious We're to behind. try it myself. Maybe yeah, we that can be the next year. Yeah, we're going to do another live next Sunday because we cook together anyway every Sunday. So we thought it'd be fun to just cook with you guys. So um, you can let us know what you want us to cook. Uh, we don't have like a planned topic yet if you have any preferences. Now for you West Coasters, I know that um, people can uh, scuba and not, no, they have to snorkel and get uh, abalone because it's such an endangered species that they don't let artificial uh, breathing devices. You have to actually dive for them. And uh, that's why abalone is so expensive in restaurants. It's, it can't be commercially fished because it gets so close to it. Oh, yeah. It expired. Extinct. Okay. Now we're going to do this a little bit of salt. Okay. And some white pepper. Tina, are you going to try a scallop? Sure, why not? Why not? I like the fish. Okay, we have about 20 minutes left before it'll expire, so... Okay, I'm no, it's okay. I just don't give you a time check. Veracruz fish. Dad, have you ever made that? No. Okay, we'll have to try that. Thanks for the Is suggestion. Veracruz, Mexico? I don't know. We'll have to look it up. I've, uh, I've eaten seafood in Talakipaki, which is uh, part of Mexico. Okay, now we're gonna use tongs, right? So let's see if we got smoke. Oh, we have smoke. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I meal prepped so much today, I don't have to cook at all this week, so I'm really excited about that and then since it's my birthday on Tuesday my parents are cooking for us so um it's nice to have all my we just love to cook on Sundays and you know have the football on or just hang out together if any of you have seen the show Blue Bloods they always have Sunday family dinner and my dad used to say I want to do that so we, we try to do it as much as we can And we figured, you know, we might as well take you along with we, what we make for dinner. Okay. So I've said everything I could put in the pan. Oh, hi, Linda. Linda. It's not too late for her to come over for Sunday dinner. <laughs> That's good. So how long will they take on each side? Well, the first, uh, probably about four or five minutes. So we may get the We can do the hearts of palm and do that. Okay, let's do that. Okay. I'll, I'll so let's get the dough on so we can heat up the butter. Now remember, these are straight out of the pan, already cooked. Linda, I'm really excited for you to try these. Um, okay, so you like a little thing. Is that Linda Pola? Where's the, you don't even know where the spoon is to get out the butter. For what's new? Oh, we'll just use it. I'm just going to get the butter out. 
So we'll melt the butter first, and then we're going to put lots of butter in. And they're already cooked, so we don't really need to boil them or anything. We just, we just want to melt the butter and kind of... Um, so you wait. just took all my butter. Oh, shoot, you need some? I didn't know you needed it. I thought you were done. I have to baste the scallops. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's no, okay. No, we'll just use half of this. This is way too much butter. I mean, not okay. that so much thing, but... Sorry, I thought we were done. No, we have to do that. We have to finish the scallop. Is that enough? Uh, sure. Okay. Mr. Hands. Mr. Hands. What? Did you just eat it? No, I need help. Oh. You need to turn it down. Hi, Amelia. Okay. Let's get it. You want to shoot all right, so these are the noodles. They look really good. They have a very, definitely chewy texture. So we're just going to kind of cook them for a couple minutes. We're going to put it in the back one, the ones that were not in the middle. Um, so it's just there. Now what we have to do with, oh yeah, you put it in a little bit. Um, now what we have to do is drain this, um, this has been soaking in almond milk for about 30 minutes. So we're going to drain it and then soak it with some more water to get the almond milk out. This was just, wow, it's definitely yeah, not as crunchy. I read online a lot of people like it soaked for, uh, for a little bit of time. So I figured we'd try that out and tell you guys what we thought. If it was worth the 30 minutes of soaking and a little bit of almond milk. We bought a ton of almond milk at Costco, hoping Amelia would like it, and she hated it. So we have a lot of almond milk left. Okay. So we're just heating this up a little bit so it's not quite so chewy. I already like it a lot better than the sheer talking needles because it, it's much thicker. It's more of a wiggly than like a slimy. And of course, you can probably season this. I've got two places here, one really good season. Okay, great. Oops, you we really thought about putting like some um, pasta sauce on this, which, you know, kind of might have made it taste a little bit better, but we didn't want the noodles to kind of hide in that. We wanted it, since it's the first time we're trying it, all four of us that are keto around here, we wanted to not mask the flavor and just really see what we like with it completely, just with some butter. And... Joan, can you grab this for a second? Just, um, <laughs> it's time for me to turn over. That's about where you want them. the brown. Oh, yeah. If you're wondering about the noodles, I'm going to do a lot of posts about it. It's just this can that we found at Publix that they have at Walmart and on Amazon and Nutrition, and you can order from their website too. It's two net carbs, and they're hearts of palm, which is from the inside of a palm tree. It's 100% hearts of palm. There's no added anything. 20 calories, two net carbs. Um, that's it. So is it a good time for me to try it? Yeah. Okay. This is one can or two. These are two cans. So the one in the back I did had no milk. So I'll just get one. This is what they look like. Kind of have a good little noodle consistency. It looks like noodles. Yeah, it's National Linguini Day. So these are officially hey. called Linguini. The scallops were fresh. Oh, okay. Mmm. So it doesn't taste like anything. Which is good. It just completely takes the taste of whatever. Uh, but honestly, I prefer these to some of the gluten-free noodles I've had. We just got a question. Have you had those before? What are you talking about? Have we uh, had what before? Oh, the, uh, the sure. Tomini, probably. I have never had this before. Um, I just have seen some people post about it. And since it was National Linguini Day today, I wanted to find them. Um, and they have a store finder on their website, which I'll post. That's what I use to find these, and they're just down the street from me. They're three dollars and fifty cents um, at Publix, or they were like three dollars and thirty cents at Walmart. And they're in the gluten-free section at Walmart, 
which is the section I try to avoid because I want to eat all the things there and they're not keto, they're just gluten free. But, um, and then um, in Publix, they were with the pasta section. So you can always ask someone if that's the, so I'm gonna try this now. This is the one that was soaked for 30 minutes in almond milk. They said it just makes it uh, taste, like takes the taste out of the, cause it kind of tastes like an artichoke part. Hey everybody, Hi. I gotta go back. I gotta get involved for a second. Because I just kept them and I just went to 120. And so just like the fish, okay? Oh, Sprouts has them too. Okay, so good to know, thanks. Just like the fish, we're gonna baste. So I went and got um, some extra uh, Kerrygold butter, which means I'll have a little less scallop, or a little less shallot flavor, which is fine. Uh, I don't always do it with shallots because I don't always have shallots. I was just trying to be especially foodie, uh, foodie for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And since it's National Appreciate Your Wife Day. That's right. That's my really... wife loves shallots. Yes, it's Kerrygold butter from Ireland. We love Ireland. Okay, so. Are you going to put the, are you going to plate the, is the pasta? Well, I there? want you to try the pasta. I think everyone oh, wants okay. to see you try it because he's oh. a pretty big, he tells it like it is. It's definitely al dente. Yeah. But we could cook it a little bit longer. I mean, it's, I mean, it's crunchy it's if like, you don't cook it. But uh, some people, you can boil it in water for like 10 minutes if you want it to be. This is the one that has the. That one has been soaked in almond milk for 30 minutes. So can you tell the difference? Yeah. That okay. one's much better. Yeah. So it's worth it. I thought the same thing. Um, that's what they look like. And. Okay. So. That looks delicious. I'll, I'll plate this up. Can I help you? Yeah. But you can see, I mean, it looks just like real pasta. Like, I definitely, and I would say, you know, $3.30 for a can, that's one can, that whole thing, um, is a little bit expensive. However, gluten-free pasta is not cheap either, and I've been buying that for years. So um, I definitely think, I mean, it's worth it for the low carb. Oh, it's a hidden Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and this stuff is kind of like a miracle. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it does yeah. look like real pasta. Much better than the cheer. I'll never buy those. I don't think cheer talking noodles. I have heard that some of the miracle noodles are better. I've never tried those. I just try the, like, cognac ones that are in, like, the Asian section of the grocery stores. So I want to take a little of this juice because uh, the butter, the, we need some more for the uh, noodles. Um, there you go. I guarantee that Gina's mom would be mm -hmm. yeah, all she'd be so happy. happy. That looks so good. Beautiful. Good Make it look clean and nice. Yeah, you got mm -hmm. some compliments on your cooking skills. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that looks so good. Come on over, and if you want. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to be gone how's soon. Plate, how's the plate feel? Oh, nice. So it's not hot, but I mean, it's not like uncomfortably hot, but it's warm. So it definitely will. Uh, so there they are. Okay, should I try one, Dad? We have oh, like yeah. four. We have like four minutes left. Okay. Let me get you. Uh... If you missed it, I'm not usually a seafood. Person. But my sisters are really brave, and they've been having seafood, so I feel like if my little sisters can do it, I can do it too. Okay, here we go. Well, I'll give you one out of the pan here. Is it hot though? Oh, it's a big, just a little, like half that. Oh, come on. Oh, I turned it around. <laughs> okay. I can't see. Okay, here okay. we go. I mean, it looks really like kind of tender on the inside. Oh. I'm just gonna do half of it. I can't fit all this in my mouth then. Oh, that <laughs> you can eat the rest though. <laughs> I mm. definitely I definitely like the fish better. But it, it's delicious. I think, yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> it was good. I definitely I'm just not it was a little chewy, but I think that's how to, I mean it wasn't chewy bad, but like it's just the texture. I'm not a seafood person. But I'm trying to get better because they're so good for you and I'm, I really want to try salmon next. Maybe we should cook salmon next. My sister okay. said salmon tastes like candy. And I was like, I don't know about that. So I kind of want to try it. We're going to be spending uh, Thanksgiving at Linda's house, Linda Fullen, in uh, Houston. So we'll have to do some cooking with her. Maybe have a show from there. 
But thank you guys so much for coming. And um, if you want to put in the comments, like what you want us to cook next week, or let me know, send me a message, because we don't know what we're cooking. But we will be here again next Sunday at the same time at 4 o'clock, because we eat really early. We eat at 5. So from 4 to 5, we you can come join us, ask us any questions. And I'll put another question box up again. So we'll answer whatever questions you guys have. And thanks for being here. Let's see. Oh, do you like freshwater fish? Um, me, I typically don't ever eat any fish. Um, Gina but... is an equal opportunity hater. <laughs> um, oh, maybe I'm like teri teriyaki salmon. Oh, I bet I have that in one of my cookbooks because I have like all the cookbooks. So, I'll, well, thanks for the recommendation. That's really good. Um, I'll have to look into that. And I know that the new Instant Pot cookbook I've been loving has a couple of salmon recipes that looked good and easy because in the Instant Pot. So let me know what you guys want to see us cook. And um, thanks for being here.